It's a matter of opinion if I'm right, but I'm leaving no for now to go outside, putting shores and obligations on our pie. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Matter of Opinion. I'm your boy, Walls P. I'm your girl, Erica. Today's topic, gun control. Now, we got to admit, we have a gun problem in America. Now, whether you're pro the Second Amendment or against it, at the end of the day, we have a gun problem. What do I mean by that? We've been having school shootings, mass shootings, all of these crazy different things that are going on in America. Now, you can point the blame to whatever, but at the end of the day, the center of this is a gun, a firearm. And now it's trickling down to the point that if you show up at the wrong address, get into the wrong car or pull up in your car at the wrong address, you can wind up getting shot at or God forbid, even killed. And this is what's been happening for like the last month or probably even longer. And these situations just have been going unnoticed. But in a time that we live in today where you got Amazon, you got Instacart, all these different delivery services that are showing up at people's doorsteps. And sometimes they show up at the wrong address. You mean to tell me, me doing my job, I can possibly get killed with no questions asked because people don't want to take the time just to ask the question? That, my friends, is a problem and can affect any one of us. Let me break down some of these situations that has happened in the last 30 to 45 days. In Florida, you had a couple by the name of Wildest Thomas Jr., a 19-year-old, and Diamond Darvell, 18-year-old, who were attempting to deliver groceries on April 15th when they were on the phone with the customer trying to find the right address. The two reportedly drove onto a property of Antonio Cacavell, 43 years old, in Southwest Ranches. They attempted to reverse out of the area, but hit a boulder, and Antonio approached them aggressively and grabbed onto the driver door window. Thomas said he tried to leave the area and heard three close gunshots, and the couple left the area following the shootings. This happened days after a high-profile case of a 16-year-old by the name of Ralph Ural was shot on April 13th by a homeowner in Kansas City, Missouri, after he accidentally went to the wrong address to pick up his siblings. Another incident, a 20-year-old Kaylin Gillis was shot and killed on April 15th, literally two days later, while in a car that mistakenly pulled into a driveway in Ural, upstate New York. A group of four friends was looking for a friend's house where a party was going on. They drove their car into the wrong driveway. They were turning around upon realizing their error when the homeowner identified as 65-year-old Kevin Monahan came out with a gun, fired at their vehicles, and end result, Kaylin Gillis was shot and killed. Literally a few days after that, two Texas cheerleaders were shot on April 18th after one of them said they mistakenly got into a wrong car in a parking lot after practice. One of the victims was treated and released at the scene, and the second cheerleader was helicoptered to a hospital in critical condition. According to the police, Pedro Telio Rodriguez Jr., 25, was charged with deadly conduct in the incident a third degree felon. These situations literally happen days apart, showing up to the wrong address, getting into the wrong car, whatever the case may be, and the immediate response is to fire? No questions asked, just pull out your gun and start firing. Now I understand, trespassing, stand your ground, all of that, but just the mere fact that somebody just show up and without asking any questions whatsoever, your first reaction is to immediately shoot your gun at the person? That's bad, ladies and gentlemen. That is a recipe for disaster. And clearly, you can see that with these situations here. But as I was scrolling through social media, I ran across a picture that depicted Caitlin Gillis' situation with Ralph Yoro's situation and putting the two at each other because of their GoFundMes. Here's that picture. The caption reads, whenever someone says black lives don't matter in this country, show them this. And as you see, Kaylin Gillis dead with their GoFundMe and Ralph Yorl alive with his GoFundMe. Now, when you look at this at first glance, you're thinking, dag, that's a big discrepancy. The person that's deceased got X amount of dollars and the person that's still alive got X amount of dollars. Now, before I continue, let's get one thing straight. People who are walking hand in hand with Black Lives Matter, the movement, do not agree with Black Lives Matter, the organization. With that being said, People will then turn around 
and lump in Black Lives Matter, the movement, with the organization and say, hey, I don't support Black Lives Matter. The two have nothing to do with each other. Black Lives Matter, the organization, is its own entity, and Black Lives Matter, the movement, is its own entity. And if you ask the regular common folk, they agree with Black Lives Matter, the movement, not the organization. Now, at first glance, you're thinking, wow, this is a big discrepancy. But as you start to pull back the layers and actually do research and look into things that perspired or things that happened, then you can kind of say, okay, you know what? I get it now. I understand. But to just put out a blanket statement and then basically put a white and a black person against each other, especially after what they suffered, the trauma that their family's going through, the person losing their life, the person being shot at, that's being disingenuous. That's what you call fake news. And then to try and undermine Black Lives Matter with this, that's even more of an underhanded tactic. Because if you go by this, that means that every Black person's GoFundMe should skyrocket. And that is not what's happening. Case in point, that cheerleader who was shot, this is her GoFundMe. So to turn around and make a blanket statement saying, hey, whenever someone says black lives don't matter in this country, show them this, you are being disingenuous. Because every tragedy that happens and a GoFundMe come up, it varies from person to person, white or black. But that does not draw a line in the sand in the argument for your fake narrative. Erica P., you want to take the time to break this down? You have to think about it. GoFundMe okay. is, is basically a crowdsource. So because GoFundMe is a crowdsource, you have to play up the story is usually the case. The more sentimental the story is, the more that you feel something was done wrong, the more you contribute. You also have to look at what these GoFundMe's are for. You're talking, in one case, the person passed away. Maybe all they did was set their goal so they had enough money to bury that person. On the flip side is you have to look at some of these other GoFundMe's. It's like, hey, I'm setting up this GoFundMe because I'm going to have, a, you know, a hard life going forward. I may have medical things that need to be done that I may not be able to do. So you have to look at what these GoFundMe's entail too. Unfortunately, I didn't read neither one of these, so I don't know what the funds are <clears throat> set up to do, but... I do know the stories are a little different. You have one who was going to a party. You have the other person who was going to go pick up their siblings. That plays a more heartfelt story when you're looking at the narrative. Erica P., that was well said. And here's another dynamic that I want to bring into the equation. What people don't realize is, when this 84-year-old shot this young boy, the police actually brought him in, questioned him, and let him go scot-free. Move along. There's nothing to see here. It wasn't until the public got a word of it and there was public outcry that they then put charges on him. And then to make matters worse, the police chief came out and said, hey, we cannot discuss this case because it's an ongoing investigation, but then literally turned around in that same statement and said, hey, this does not seem to be a uh, case driven by race. But yet the prosecutor came out and said, pretty much everything in this case seemed to be race driven. But the bad part about it is since that police chief made that statement, that can be used in court as a defense that resonates with people, that resonates with people in that community. Because it's like, yo, Where's the justice that we're getting for a man that just blindly shot his gun at a 16-year-old that came out to pick up his siblings? No questions asked. Then even ask him, hey, are you lost? Can I help? Just a little boy show up at your door, ring the doorbell, and your retaliation is to shoot him. That resonates with people. See, I understand, like you said, Erica P., these folks were going to a party and pulled up at the wrong address, but you have a lot of people that aren't into the party life. So they're thinking, and it's sad to say, nothing against like, you know, these individuals that went through this tragic situation and this poor young girl that lost her life, but you literally have people who will think, yo, 
I'm not into the parties. My kids don't do parties and all this other stuff. So it might not resonate with a larger crowd. But when it comes to people having their kids picking up their siblings and things of that nature, whether it's babysitting and all of this stuff, that resonates. That's an innocent matter that anybody or anybody's child can run into that circumstance. So it's going to resonate. His story is so out of the norm that it reaches everybody's heartstrings compared to the other story. The other story is different. Yes. Was it popular? Was it on the news? Of course it was on the news. Somebody created the page to help that family out. But think about how many times the pages are created and you don't have the media coverage. The pages are created and yes, you don't get 80,000 clicks or 100,000 clicks. Mm -hmm. You get 12 clicks. You get 30 clicks. You get maybe the people that are in their community and that's it. That's the other thing. When you start having extenuating circumstances and then you start getting the coverage behind it, that's usually what causes these GoFundMes to explode. Their goals start changing. It, hey, if I set a hundred thousand goal and I met it in forty minutes, what do you think I'm about to go do? I'm about to go up my goal. The more I start talking about it, the more people start sharing it, the more funds will come in. Two, like I said, you don't know what these funds are being utilized for. So it's like, hey, I met a goal and I'm about to go create a park. If you're telling me you're gonna go create a park, I might go ahead. And handle that for you. I might be like, hey, my $20 matter. My $200 matter. Because if it's a cause that I feel that's near and dear to the community or my community, I might participate in it. That's the thing. You don't know which one of these GoFundMes will exceed the other when you first start, start when you first set it up and start out. Thing is, stories expand by clicks. The more people click on them, the more people are going to become aware of it. The more, you know, depending on what search engine algorithm it is, the higher the placement. Two, you cannot compare, you know, your own race crime on your on somebody else's. And the reason for that is a lot of times you start, you're like, oh, that's just another, okay. Because people become null, and null to it. It becomes the statistics that you don't want to see. It becomes the same news story all the time. So if you're living in a high crime area and a crime happens, what are you going to do? You'd be like, oh, that's just a normal day for me. So that's why those stories to me don't get as much play, as much as many spins. They're not in the media as often, unless you're the media going, hey, don't go to input this area here. You do not go to input this area because of high crime either. And to me, I don't think it's a black or white issue when it does that. It's more of a poverty issue. Anytime you look at any area that's heavily populated where there is an income disparity, then that's when you'll get the, Hey, this is not the nicest area. This is, you know, an area that we're expected high traffic, high crime rates and that's what they're doing compared to the people that may live in those areas they'd be like okay it might just be those handful of blocks and people don't tell you about the surrounding parts of the area that are not what they're trying to depict it as at the end of the day all of this could have been avoided if you would have just took the time to say hey are you lost can i help you and again you could have had this conversation behind the door people pull up into your driveway you could just look out the window, see what's going on. If they're at a wrong address, they're eventually going to leave. You never know just from a person showing up at your doorstep or at your door if they're at the wrong address or they need help. Hell, you could be talking to them from behind the door and they actually say, hey, I need help. All right, stay on the porch. I'm going to call 911. Help will be here shortly. Problem solved. There's no reason for you to have that shoot first, ask questions last mentality. Because all that does is lead to disaster, people getting hurt. 
for what just because a person needed some directions pro gun or not you have to admit there is a gun problem in this country erica p final thoughts for me the agenda was hey look at two people who were in similar situations where they were at the wrong house type of circumstance but for me no it will never resonate the same because each person's story is different i feel like the more heartfelt the story is the more people will want to help that person if i'm somebody who doesn't party unfortunately the story of the other person doesn't matter to me and i'm not saying it like they're, I'm not saying their life doesn't matter. That's not yeah, what you're I'm not saying. trying. You're but, not trying to be a douche about it or anything like correct. that. You're just, you know, I get what you're saying. But what I am going to say is if the story is compelling and it tugs on my heartstrings, that's when you decide, hey, I got this extra couple dollars sitting here. Let me send it to somebody in need to help. That's usually the case. Mm -hmm. You're talking this, the story of the little boy that is a heartstring for everybody because guess what? One, he's not an adult. Two, you talk when you start looking at the background story, he was a top student at school. Like his story was very compelling. He was a science Olympian. Mm -hmm. Like you look at that stuff and you're like, hey, I may not, you know, resonate with the kid on the level of school, but you know what? He was doing something. He had the potential to do something different. You don't know if this is, you know, he's fighting one day at a time. So that's what I'm saying. For me, it's not the fact that of the, you know, the the price differences where one only got 100K or a little under and one got millions. It's the story. If your story is more compelling than the other, you're going to get the bigger goal set. You're going to no, have, I you know, that type of stuff. I get that 100%, but I guess the narrative that's trying to be painted is it seems like they're trying to make an issue with the money. And for a group of people that always say, when I say group of people, I'm talking black conservatives, for, for them to always say racism don't exist and want to take race out of the equation, I sure see race being the center of a lot of the arguments that they make Correct. when it comes to black conservatives you can't use that caption to undermine black lives matter just because in this one scenario one person got more money while the other person didn't get as much money as the other one with that being said ladies and gentlemen let us know what you guys think in the comment section i would love to hear your take on the matter if it's your first time here consider hitting that subscribe button and clicking that notification bell and if you want to follow us on our other social media platforms the links are in the description like this video share this video comment on the video i'm your boy walls p i'm your girl erica and we will catch you ladies and gentlemen on the next episode peace, peace. it's a matter of a peace.